Undoubtedly. Being on the spiritual path, you've been inspired by some great one, like Lester Levinson, Eckhart Tolle, Yogananda, Ramana Maharshi. You've read their words, you've heard them speak, and what they've said has resonated with you. You're like, oh, I want to be like that. I want to be that free and happy and imperturbable. And so many people are on this path inspired by these great ones. So why is it with so many people following all these wonderful teachings, why so few ever make it to that freedom? That's what we're gonna take a look at today. What it takes in order to go all the way, to be a master and also to have everything that you want in life, to demonstrate miracles for yourself, because why not? Let's take a look at all of this and see what we can really do. Coming up. Welcome back. What we're gonna take a look at today is exactly what it takes to go all the way. Not just all the way to being free, to being an unlimited being, to being a master, but also going all the way to having the big goals that you want in life. Because this being a goals course, you came here with some pretty big goals in mind, whether it's being a multimillionaire, healing your body, or whatever, whatever it is that's big that you want to demonstrate in your life, that you want to have. We're gonna take a look at what's stopping you and how to overcome that. Now, as far as going free and going all the way, you know, talk about the ultimate goal. What I've seen you know, in all the years that I've been involved in this is so many people come into this method, start doing this work, and they see someone like a Lester or an Eckhart Tolle or other master and go, wow, that's someone special. I want what they have. I want to be like that. I want to be that imperturbable. I want to be that positive and happy. I want to be in that place where nothing can touch me beyond all problems and limitations. Now we say it, and what Lester pointed out is even though that we say it, we don't really mean it. In fact, you know, Lester was quite blunt about it. He took the graduates to task. He said, look, you tell me you want freedom, but you're a liar. You're lying to me and you're lying to yourself because you say it, and then the very next moment, you turn right around and do the opposite of what you say you're intending to do. You say you want freedom, you want to be all loving, you want to be imperturbable, but in the next moment, you're complaining about something, or you're going right into your ego, you're going right into your desires, and you're protecting that, you're defending it, and then calling yourself someone who's on the path to freedom. No, you're not. You're determined to be an ego. And until you own up to that, until you're honest with yourself and stop pretending, oh, I'm a spiritual one, I'm all about freedom, right? You're just kidding yourself doing that. And the way to turn that around is to be honest with yourself. Look at your actions. Are your feet following your mouth? And then that gives you an option. <laughs> what am I going to do about that? Am I going to get serious about it? Or am I going to play make-believe? Now that's true whether it's going free. And it's also true when it comes to our goals. You see, all we have to do is just take a look at our actions. Here we are, we show up to a course like this. 
We pay good money for this so that we could achieve our goals. And we say we want these goals. I want to be a multimillionaire. But it doesn't take long before we start coming up with excuses. Oh, I didn't have time to do my homework assignments. Oh, I forgot. Or I got busy. Yeah. So clearly, if our actions aren't following what we say our intentions are, then those intentions are a joke. And our first step is owning up to that and deciding, okay, well, do I want to get serious about this or do I want to abandon it? See, it's okay, do one or the other, but don't pretend that you have the intentions and then ignore the fact that you're not following through on those intentions. And that's what keeps a lot of people stuck. And I've seen that in myself. I'm not pointing fingers at anybody. I've done this. I've seen literally everybody in the releasing community do this. I've seen other releasing teachers do this. And it's the silliest thing to go around. And you see this on Facebook all the time. People posting quotes from masters, talking about, you know, unlimitedness, talking about love, unity, oneness. And then in the very next post, they're complaining about somebody or something. Or they're pulling themselves down or they're pulling others down with complaining about climate change or wealth inequality or this a-hole who's destroying the world and getting everybody all negative about it. Yet they're a beacon for freedom. They're all about you know, Lester's work. So once you recognize, wait a minute, am I just saying it or am I really doing it? Then that can lead us to, well, what does it take to really do it? And like I said, the first step is just recognizing what we're doing, that we're making ourselves stuck and then making the decision to move forward. And then the next thing that we can do is be practical about it. See, a lot of times what also gets us stuck is blind belief. So Lester says that we could just manifest things just by thought, that we can create whatever we want just by deciding to have it, just by allowing it. And you see lots of people talking about allowing things into their life, right? And they're, you know, they're talking about it. But <clears throat> these same people, they're struggling to make a living. If you turned them upside down and you shook them, nothing would fall out of their pockets. They're broke. They can't demonstrate all this allowing that they're talking about. So they're taking it by blind faith. But that's not practical. What is practical is, well, my teacher Larry's approach. Because he shared a story about when he first met Lester. And Lester hit him with some pretty incredible and seemingly impractical ideas. First thing that Lester told Larry was that there's no such thing as a germ. And the other thing that he told him was that work is for slaves. Now those were pretty far out to Larry, those concepts. Because Larry was sick all the time. He was always catching a cold. The way he put it was that if you were talking on the phone with him and you sneezed on your end, he would catch a cold on his end. So he was like a hypochondriac. And even though he was really successful, he had to work incredibly hard for it. He was working 18 hours a day. So that was Larry's reality. Not what Lester was talking about. You know, Larry had a whole different picture. 
of limitations that existed in his life. But he didn't just override those with blind belief. But what he decided was key. He said to himself, wait a minute. If Lester's wrong, I'm no worse off than where I already am right now. I would still have you know, the problems in my body. I would still have to work. All right, I got nothing to lose. But if he's right, I just might have a chance to get rid of all my illnesses and to stop having to work so hard for a living while still being successful. So what he decided to do was just take it for checking. He said, well, I got nothing to lose. I'm going to try what Lester's got and see if that works for me. And that was a very healthy, practical attitude. And that's one that we can take moving forward. And that will always keep us on track. Just that practical attitude. Now, the other thing that we can use is courageousness, a determination to move forward, to not just stop, not just settle. And that's where a lot of us stop short. And we wonder why so few of us go all the way to having that big goal or going free. And for those of you who are in Danny's course that we're doing on money alchemy, on trading in the markets, he puts it really well. It's like this. If I told you that I hid $5 million in your house, but it's up to you to find it, would you just look under the sofa and behind the refrigerator and then go, oh, well, I looked there and I looked there. I can't find it, so I give up. I'm going to stop looking. No. You would not stop. You would leave no stone unturned. If I told you, you know, definitely there's five millions there. You can find it if you look for it. You just got to look for it. You wouldn't stop. You would pull up every floorboard. You would take that house apart until you found it, right? And that is the type of determination and courage that we can foster in moving forward. And we can move up into this very easily and use it to our advantage. And that's what we're going to take a look at. So let's start by examining one of your goals. Take a look at a goal that you have, a big goal. Now it could be a worldly goal, something that you just want to demonstrate in this world. Whether it's having lots of money, great health, a wonderful relationship, a huge goal, maybe even one that seems impossible, that everything in the world is telling you, you cannot do that. Right? Even the goal of going free. So just take a look at a really big goal of yours. Now, it's probably undeniable that you want this goal. You'd very much like to have it. And maybe you talk about it, but take a look at what you're really doing to get there. Are you going all in? Now you might be doing some things. You might be dipping your toe in. You might be putting it in you know, up to your ankle, but not going all the way. Now put in all of your focus, all of your energy into having it. Now, what I mean by also putting all your energy in, I'm not talking about like, you know, grinding yourself through it, but you just might see yourself holding back or saying that you want it, but not really acting like it or making excuses. And if it's a goal, maybe you see that 
you've done very little to really work on that goal. But just take a look. How serious are you? And what are you willing to do to have it? And are you ready to step beyond the talk to doing whatever it takes? Now this isn't a mental exercise. It's not about pumping yourself up, getting all rah-rah about it. But now, noticing what's stopping you. What's in the way? Now maybe fear is stopping you. Maybe you're afraid to really put yourself out there. Maybe there's a fear that if you really go for it, you might fail. And especially if you let everybody know that you're going for it and you fail, then they're gonna laugh at you. And they're gonna think you're an idiot. Maybe something like that. Or maybe you're afraid of leaving your comfort zone. And to a lot of us, these limitations that we say we want to overcome, they give us a sense of comfort, a sense of security. We, you know, we know how the world operates because of these limitations. We know what the boundaries are. And in that sense, it gives us a sense of comfort and security being boxed in and completely removing those boxes that leaves us wide open, vulnerable. So just take a look. See if you have fear holding you back. Now be honest with yourself and acknowledge that fear and welcome that fear up. Just let yourself feel it. Now on a scale of zero to 10, with 10 being the most fearful and zero being the least fearful, just see where you're at with that fear. And wherever that fear is, can you see that you've been avoiding it? Either pushing it down because it's like, oh, I got no time for you right now, fear. Or denying the fear. Oh, I'm supposed to be a spiritual one. I'm not supposed to have any fear, so I'm not gonna admit it. Or you run from it, maybe hoping that it goes away. But in essence, in doing all of that, all you're really doing is you're just saying no to that fear. That fear that you already have inside of you, that you feel right now, that you put a number to. And when you say no to that fear, does it make the fear go away? No. It just festers and grows and becomes more of a problem. So if saying no doesn't work, let's do the opposite. So take a look at that fear, whatever number that is for you. Maybe it's a three, an eight, or beyond a 10. And look at that fear. And just say yes to it. And say yes to that fear a little bit more. and say yes to it a little bit more. And even more. And even more. 
and say yes to that fear some more. Just look at it and say yes to it, that's all. And not the story, not whatever it is that's coming into your mind, but just the fear itself that comes up. Could you say yes to that fear? And say yes to it some more. And even more. And even more. And even more. And could you say yes to it even more? And even more. And even more. Now measure yourself again. See if there's a difference. See if that fear dropped. Now, because you have the energy flowing, you got some momentum moving, could you welcome up the rest of that fear? If you've been holding it down, say no to it, suppress it, just let go pushing it down now. And you could feel that's what you've been doing, just pushing down on that fear, pushing down on all of your feelings, and thereby accumulating them and suppressing them. And that's the negativity that you end up walking around with day in and day out. But now, just let go pushing down on it. Let all that fear come up and leave. Just get out of the way, let it pass through. It's just energy, that's all. And watch it pass through. And watch it pass through some more. And some more. And some more. And even more. And even more. And how does that feel? Now take a look at that story that brought up the fear. That story of being ridiculed or losing something by putting yourself out there. And see if that's so scary as it was a few moments ago. Or is it not even a consideration anymore? Now what else is stopping you? Again, take a look at your actions. If you say you want your goal, maybe your goal is freedom, but then your actions are opposite of that. Right? You're worried about this world problem. You're worried about what those people are doing. Then all your attention is on that, and there's no solution to that. If you haven't noticed, all this <clears throat> stuff that we have to deal with in the world, all the limitations, all the problems, they don't sort themselves out. Even with all the advances in medicine and science, we still get diseases. We still die. And no matter what brilliant plan a, you know, someone has for a government, it doesn't solve anything in society. <laughs> 
and all the things that we do to try to influence and change what people are doing, change the way that they think, change the way that they behave, good luck. People are always going to behave like a fool. So, you're putting all your attention into something that has no resolution instead of what you say you're after, freedom, love, unconditional love, imperturbability. So be honest with yourself. Are you doing the opposite? And don't kid yourself by trying to rationalize it. Oh, this is a vehicle of good. This is a way of giving into the universe so the universe gives back. Nonsense. You're just making excuses. And likewise, maybe your goal is worldly. Maybe it's to be a multimillionaire. And what are your actions? You know, maybe you're not working on your goals so much, but also maybe you find yourself blaming others for wealth inequality, blaming others why you can't have it. Maybe you're worried about what's going to happen in the economy, inflation, all that stuff. Well, if you put your focus and your energy on that, guess what? That is what you get. So if you are serious about being wealthy and being wise, then what are you going to need to correct in your attitude and your actions? And take a look to see if you've been resisting making that correction. Maybe you think it's difficult. Or maybe you're letting your ego convince you to go down that road. But just take a look, see if you have resistance. Now, you don't need to play Dr. Phil with yourself. You don't need to understand where this resistance is coming from, but you could feel it. Just feel this like, uh, this resistance to moving away from that. Maybe you feel like you just can't. It's just too ingrained in your psyche. Well, then you might as well just give up, right? Okay, I looked under the couch. I looked behind the fridge, right? The answer isn't there, so I just give up. That's what a lot of people do, whether they want to admit it or not. They give up on the path. and they abandon their dreams. So measure that resistance on a scale of zero to 10, 10 being the most resistant and zero being the least resistant. And where are you at? And see if you've been saying no to that resistance. <clears throat> Just the resistance itself, that ugh feeling. Right? It's like, who wants to struggle through that? It makes everything difficult. It doesn't feel good. So we suppress it. We sweep it under the rug. We pretend we're above all of that. But be honest. Own up to it. Now, if you've been saying no to that resistance, see what that gets you. Does that make the resistance go away? Or does it just build it up secretly more and more and more? And would you be willing to turn that ship around and do the opposite? Now, could you say yes to that resistance? To face it, to acknowledge it, 
to be with it. Simply just say yes to it. And could you say yes to that resistance a little bit more? And a little bit more. And could you say yes to it even more? And even more. Just say yes to it, that's all. And could you say yes to it even more? And even more. And how does that feel? Right, measure yourself again. See if that number dropped. That's just a good way, just proving to yourself, oh, okay, that resistance has moved. I got that energy moving. Now don't stop, don't just settle for that. Welcome up the rest of that resistance, wherever that came from. Let go pushing it down. Let it come up. Just allow it to arise. Let it be here with you. And open up a big door, big imaginary door right in front of you. Now, if that resistance wants to leave out the door, great. If it wants to stay, if it's determined to hold on, that's great too. In fact, look at that resistance and say, I love you, resistance. I love you. I love you if you leave, and I love you if you stay. I just love you either way. I love you, resistance. Right? Allow it all to arise. And just get out of the way. Let it pass through. Just watch it. What does it do? Does that resistance want to leave? Sure it does. It doesn't belong there. So just get out of the way. Let it leave. And let it leave some more. And some more. And some more. And even more. And even more. Welcome that resistance up even more. Just open up and let it pass through. Just let it leave. Like open up a pressure valve. Just let that energy escape. Now measure yourself again. See where you are now. Did that number drop? Maybe it went all the way to the bottom. And how do you feel about that? Feel easier, lighter, freer? And see if you're resisting doing whatever it takes to have that goal. Even if you have to work for it. So what? If you really are about imperturbability, that wouldn't bother you. But you see, it's easier, right? When you let the resistance go, not only are you not bothered by it, but that whole prospect doesn't seem so real. So that limitation, where was it? In your mind, right? And this is another thing that we have to really address if we're going to go all the way is doing whatever it takes to overcome these limitations. Now, some of these limitations 
They seem real. And some of them, they're just within us, but equally they seem real. Now what I mean by seeming real, like in the world, some of the limitations seem genuinely real, like they're backed by science, physics, right? Can't overcome that. How would I do that by releasing only? But how do you know that limitation other than in your mind? And other limitations which are only in your mind also seem very, very real. Like, in order to go free, you'd really have to go into some dark spaces inside of yourself, right? You'd have to confront some pretty icky stuff. And that's a limitation. Like, I can't do that. I'm not, I'm not strong enough. Or I tried it. I let go of some of it, but it came back. It's just endless. So that is a limitation. You know, whether it's like seems real or not, it is real. And again, we can be impractical. We can go around pretending that these limitations aren't real. And you see spiritual people doing this all the time, saying, oh, I'm not this limited hunk of flesh. But then they get sick. They had to feed themselves. They had to cater to their body. That body is very much real to them. But instead of taking that impractical approach, we can take the practical approach like my teacher Larry. Say, okay, well, that limitation seems real, but what do I have to lose by coming from the position that it isn't real? That there is nothing there. Even if science and all the fact checkers on Facebook are telling me otherwise, what do I have to lose? Worst case scenario, I'm just in the same position I'm in right now. Big whoop. But if I really go into it and if I pick it apart, I just might discover that it isn't real and I can move into a new existence beyond that. And from this position, we could take a very practical approach because whatever limitation seems real, how do you know? Well, your mind is telling you that. And your mind is just telling you what it's read, what it's heard other people say, what it's heard the scientists say. But all you know is what your mind is telling you. And of course, your mind doesn't have all the answers and things that your mind was so sure about have been debunked, proven false, over and over again. But here's the thing. It's not about just denying that. You know, we're not a bunch of deniers here. We're practical. We're about proving it. And we start by what we can prove. So the limitations seem real. We're not gonna just pretend that they aren't. But we're gonna notice something else, right? So how do we know the limitations? Well, our mind is telling us, or we're experiencing it in the world. I see it through my senses. But who's aware of what we're observing? Like right now, you're observing me talking to you. Right? I'm talking to who? I'm not talking to you, the body. I'm not seeing your body. I'm not talking to you, the mind. I'm not talking to you, the personality. I'm just talking to you who's here listening. Just you who's aware that you're being talking to. And pay attention to that. Just notice who you are, who's aware of this conversation that's taking place, who's listening, who's observing. And can you really put a finger on where that is and who that is and what that is? That has no face, no name, 
no body, no past, no future. It just is. Right? And that thing, that isness, cannot be touched by these limitations. It's not affected by them whatsoever. It has no barrier, no body, no boundary. It's timeless. That silent presence, the awareness, is the exact same now as it was 10 years ago. Observing all the turmoil and drama that was going on, it was just there to go, oh, that's interesting. And the same 20 years ago, and the same lifetimes ago. Just pure awareness. What limitation does that have? So we can see that difference. We can see where the limitations exist and where we exist. And that gives us a way of moving forward. Now, beyond that, it's up to us to exercise the courageousness and the commitment to keep moving forward and undo all of that stuff so that by process of elimination, we just come back to ourselves. The only thing that is persistent, that doesn't change, that isness. And what are you willing to do to do that? Now that takes an incredible amount of courage and an incredible amount of determination. The way Lester put it, you must want freedom more than a drowning person wants oxygen. And have that determination. Then inspire your actions to not just say it, but do it. Now, how can you have this courageousness? It's easy. It's just a decision. And you can keep yourself focused, committed, on point, and courageous, and undaunted, just with a simple decision. You see, put it like this. If you wanted to get in your car and drive someplace, say you wanted to drive to Santa Fe, and you didn't have the determination to get there, what would you do? You'd just sit in your car and probably just scroll through social media, waste your time. But if you're determined, you put your key in the ignition, you turn that car on, put it in gear, and you step on the gas, and you start going in the direction of Santa Fe. Now let's say your car breaks down. Do you give up and go, okay, well, I only went as far as I can go. Maybe I'll just walk back home or just hang out here in the middle of nowhere. No. You call yourself an Uber. Or if an Uber isn't available, you walk to the nearest bus stop and you get on a bus. And if the bus breaks down, maybe you find a taxi to take you to an airport, and then you fly there, or you hitchhike. If you're determined, you're not gonna let anything stop you, right? And it's just a decision. Now, take a look at your goal. However big and wild that goal is, And first, just notice if you've been holding yourself back, playing it safe, playing small, All right? Playing it lazy. Oh, I'll get to it tomorrow. 
shows you how serious you are about that goal. And maybe you've been avoiding it. Maybe you've been encountering some limitations, some resistance, some fear or other ego stuff. You're like, oh, that's too strong. I don't want to have to deal with that. I'd rather just have fun. You know, stay in my safe space that I'm not happy with, but I don't know, it's better than that. And you're just listening to your ego. But if you're determined, what's stopping you? If you're really serious about it and you have big obstacles in the way, then you know, what's wrong with seeing if you can eliminate those obstacles? What do you have to lose? So you put yourself out there. You know, and if they turn out to be real, big deal. You're no worse off than you are now. But if you give it everything, you just jump in with both feet, hold nothing back, maybe you just might break through and realize you could have that wildest goal of your dreams. And maybe even be able to be a master, just like Lester, like Eckhart Tolle, like Buddha. You can be one of the great ones. What do you have to lose? So, with that in mind, it's not so difficult to be courageous. And being in courageousness is easy. All you have to do is just let your body guide you. See, right now, just sit like you'd sit if you're courageous. How would you sit? You know, would you be kind of laid back and relaxed? You know, chill, taking it all in? Or maybe more upright, more attentive. So sit that way. How you sit when you're courageous. How do you breathe when you're courageous? And breathe that way now. How would you hold your face? Is your jaw clenched? Is it relaxed? Just check to see where it's at and just let it be how you are when you are courageous. So just sit that way now. Just sit like you're unstoppable. And feel that energy. Just let that energy lift you up. and resonate with the attitude of courageousness. The feeling unstoppable, undaunted, focused, determined, having conviction, having integrity, having honesty with yourself. and saying yes to yourself. How does that feel? Just saying those words gives you a lift, right? Examining it. And let yourself just breathe in that courageousness right now. Let that fill you up, all that positive energy. And now, from this position, look at having your goal. Are you going to let anything stop you? Of course not. Are you going to take the lazy way to doing it? Or are you just going to do it? After all, Lester said, how long does it take to do a two-week job? I'm talking about going free. Two weeks or less. And that's coming from someone who did it. And you don't have to believe him. You don't have to blindly trust him. But what do you have to lose? If he could do it, maybe you can do it. Why not take it for checking? Coming from courageousness, 
that's not such a strong leap. Are you willing to take it for checking? And are you willing to confront all of your limitations, the seeming one, real ones in the world and the deep ones inside of yourself? And could you let that go now? So what are you resisting or what do you feel for, fearful of right now? And are you going to continue holding on to that fear and resistance? Save it for tomorrow? Or if you're courageous and you're determined, you're going to let it go right now. So can you welcome it up? Right? It's just the fact that you've been pushing it down, that it's there. Let go pushing it down. Bring it up right now. Let that fear or resistance go. and let it go some more. And some more. And some more. And even more. And welcome it up some more. Don't just stop. Don't go, oh, okay, I let a little bit of it go. That feels good. I'm not suffering so much. I'm going to go back to being an ego. I'm going to go back to my safe space. No, don't stop. Don't stop until you prove that goal. Can you bring up some more fear resistance? Can you let that go? Just welcome it up and open up that big door and let it leave. And more. And even more. And even more. And even more. And how does that feel? And are those limitations as big now as they were a couple minutes ago? Less so, right? So if you keep just doing this, and by the way, talk about what do you have to lose what do you have to lose if you just keep releasing, right? Even if the limitations turn out to be insurmountable, but you release anyway. And you end up feeling lighter, happier, freer, imperturbable. What's wrong with that? So with this in mind, why wouldn't you just put all of your energy into doing this? And stop wasting your time doing the opposite, like Lester said, saying that you want it, but doing everything other than doing it. Or just doing it half-assed, doing a little bit here, but 90% just feeding your ego. Own up to it and get serious. And that's how you achieve your goals fast. All right. So keep moving forward. And prove it to yourself. So I hope you like this little cleanup and releasing session. And if what we were looking at makes sense to you, let me know in the comments below. What is your take on this? I know this can be a little bit challenging, a little bit confronting, but just let me know what you think and what you see about this in yourself. And if you find this helpful, hit the like button, let me know. And that'll help kind of share this positive message. If you find it good, let's 
help others find this goodness. And if you'd really like to go further into this, you know, because talking about getting serious and going all the way, I invite you to join me because regularly we have six week classes, live classes, where we take this work into a very deep and real level, applying it to our goals, applying it to aspects in our life like our body. And the next course coming up is about body mastery and proving it out. So if you'd like to really just jump in and take this work to the next level and get to a place where you in your body are in a place of total courageousness, confidence, with a conviction that no one and nothing can harm or destroy you, what would your life be like? What could you do coming from that position? And if that intrigues and inspires you, then click below. I'll put a link to it in the description, also up here, so you can check out this new Body Mastery course. But do what it takes and prove to yourself who you really are.